And we're back, beautiful people. I am Randall. This is my amazing, awesome friend, Mac. And this is Ram Film Reviews. What you know about that? Holiday edition. Uh, well, follow-up holiday edition. Because we technically already had a holiday edition. We didn't know if we were going to be able to manage to sneak another one in there. Uh, but we managed to do so. And that's the fantasticness of being able to accomplish things. Zer, <laughs> they're very sneaky, and we got a little special surprise possibly at the end of the show. Yep, to show you uh, beautiful viewers, beautiful supporters. Yep, we got a little something for you. Show show you, you know, we're serious about certain things. But yeah, Randall uh, brought up a good movie to watch today. Mm. Tonight, I'm sorry. I thought we were gonna watch, you know, the Krampus movies and whatnot. I already had that in mind. Yeah, but he had mentioned something a few days ago, which I completely, you know went over my head uh this uh finland movie called uh rare exports a christmas tale go ahead Ryan. um yeah and i found this movie because i was trying to kind of locate uh different kind of krampus stories that have happened uh through the years of film right because mm -hmm. it's a tale as old as who knows how long i mean how long has krampus existed as part of folklore probably a long damn time but um when i went on the live to talk a little bit about the holidays and the movies that we were trying to see what we looked into or whatever um i went on you know good old google and started looking up different crab pest movies while on the live and i think a couple people were on the live with me i think ellie was there uh merle was there mm -hmm. um and he mentioned the 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 more modern Krampus movie, which I think was a 2015 movie, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he mentioned that one uh, being a really good movie. And I was like, I definitely have to see it because I haven't seen that yeah. one yet. And I want to watch it. Uh, and then I also saw Mother Krampus, which was, you know, a movie. And <laughs> Indeed, there's still part two to watch. Yeah, we still have to do part two. Um, mm -hmm. And then I saw another one that had uh, a kind of interesting... Uh, rating on it which was a movie called rare exports and i kind of looked a little bit you know we like to look watch these movies kind of blindly and not really uh pay too much attention to a lot of detail because we want to kind of get surprised by plots we want to get surprised by the twist and we don't want to get any of those details ahead of time when we watch mm -hmm. a movie like this and um yeah uh, this one had, like, I think IMDb had it at oh, yeah. 6.7 out of 10. Right. Rotten Tomatoes had it at 90%. 90%. Uh, so everywhere it looked like this had a positive reflection. Mm -hmm. Now I was like, you know what? Maybe it's about time we watch a movie that I'm not looking at and saying, right. hey, this looks like it's going to be terrible. We need to watch it. Uh, so I, I kind of wanted to do this movie just based on that and kind of seeing a little bit of... Uh, not the plot really, but just that it had to do with investigating mm -hmm. the origin of of Santa, and it mentions Krampus. Like you see a comparison to Krampus type of thing. That's all I saw. I saw that line. I'm like, okay, so it's Krampus related. That's enough for me. Um, and I didn't look any more into it. Really, I didn't. And um, when Matt got here today, I was like, you know, um, what did you think of which movie did you want to do? And mentioned Krampus again. I'm like, yeah, that one. And then I also kind of want to watch that Rare Exports movie. And when he kind of glanced a little too, and he was like, okay, let's do that. Yeah, mainly how he described it was people researching or like investigating, like you said, the origins of Santa. Yeah. In my mind, it was like a documentary type style. I was like, ah. I was like, yeah, fucking, that's you know, something different, and it was not that. I did not dis, it did not <laughs> disappoint. I fucking love this movie. Uh, it is uh, rated R. Yep. Due to certain scenes, and you know, <laughs> I mean, technically, it's kind of guided by a child. Yeah. The movie itself, and you know what? It kind of gives. I mean, obviously, I think this is a far drastic kind of a comparison but it kind of gives in a way a pan's labyrinth kind of vibe to it right like it's the a little, child little girl, yeah, a yeah. child looking into something that's supposed to be happy folklore but mm -hmm. and then 
It appears to be more than just that. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's not at the same level as Pan's Labyrinth, because Pan's Labyrinth to me is like a fucking masterpiece. Of course. But um, in line with uh, kind of how it balances out. So it's a child uh, who wants to kind of research more into the origin of Santa, right? Mm -hmm. Because he... Him and his best friend are like kind of digging around where they shouldn't be digging around, and they kind of see things they shouldn't see. Yeah. And it triggers the kid to be like, "Oh, I think what's up there is Santa. I think he's buried up there." Yeah, he just—he's the only one that seems to like be heading in one path. Yeah. Yeah, they're—they're they're at the uh, the border between Finland and Russia. Yeah. And it's a British team, uh, you know, with explosives just digging and uh, the. The guy's heading, uh, leading the, the the team. The exploration. The exploration, yeah. He's kind of off. Like, you were even saying, like, oh, is he an elf? Is he, like, kind of I mean, like, it was very elf. Like, he had a like, green, he had yeah. a nice green hat, red undershirt. Like, it was very elf-like colors. Yeah, he was like, oh, no cursing. We gotta be, you know, be in the Christmas spirit and whatnot. And, yeah, a bunch of explosions started happening. But this little kid was just, like, determined that, oh, it's Santa's buried in there and of course his best friend Juso was just mocking him like what are you talking about Santa's not real yeah exactly like went down the whole like you know face reality kid mm -hmm. everything you believed in is lies and, um, and the kid is always uh, holding on to like a little yeah they never stuffed, went into much detail into that yeah a little stuffed animal called I think called the Voopy Voopy yeah which to me looked like a, a I don't know like, it was a, like a rag doll to me like, like a like, rag doll with no Stuffing inside, yeah. little buttons, and he has it tied like a dog. You know, he drags it around like, "Come, booby." Yeah. You know, he talks to it here and there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we never got more detail into that. I mean, I felt like there was more to that that could have been explained. But then again, you know, it, it didn't really tie too much no. to the movie in the end. So mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't necessary. Just you know, a child being a child kind of right. concept there. But um, so yeah, so. Our main kid here, uh, damn, what's his he name? Has a, he has a little, yeah, he has like a, um, P, I, I want to say Petri. Pietri. 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 Yeah, Pietri. Pietri or something like that, or Pietra or something. Piedra. Spanish. Piedra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's where Juso is the one that was like the easiest yeah. name to like, to like kind of understand. Uh, yeah, Pietra, Pietari. P Pietari. 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 So Pietari, which mm -hmm. is our main uh, protagonist in this movie, mm -hmm. um, decides after seeing the excavation being done and our, everything that they're doing, decides to grab like 50 books yeah. that all have to do with the origin of Santa. And he miraculously had them in his room. Um, and he dug. He read he read it yeah. through it, and it was crazy because you're talking about this kid looks like he's like what, maybe, maybe ten, maybe, yeah, yeah. you know. And he read <laughs> a but then lot. Again, like you know, compared to us in the states and them over there, I can tell like it's it's only it's <sighs> it's only men, uh, so they have like you know they're they're hunting, they're showing the kids how to hunt deer and whatnot. Yeah. So I guess you know they kind of grow up faster. But yeah, it was funny they had he, this kid had a trail of books. And he was sitting on three suitcases, just a yeah. cute little kid, just reading. And it was funny. Randall just started laughing because he he fell asleep on the suitcases. Yeah. And his little tidy whities and his dad's like, like calling him. I think he threw a snowball. Yeah, he threw a snowball at the window. At the window and like scared the shit out of him. He's just yeah. rolling in his undies. It was funny and cute. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah it was a funny scene. It was, it was a nice scene. And then, um, at one point, like the kids trying to put together the origin of Santa. Mm -hmm. And then he has one picture of um, of Santa in front of him, and it's in black and white. And he decides to color in what's supposed to be like the horns mm -hmm. uh, that that's on top of this character's mm -hmm. picture, and he paints it red or colors it in red like the Santa hat. Mm -hmm. So that was really interesting on how he did that to kind of like identify like this is what Santa really is. And it turns out. That the version he read into of the version of Santa is the Krampus version of Santa, which is the one that grabs the switch on Naughty Kids mm -hmm. and then goes ahead and uh, 
I mean, it looked from very, very uh, explicit pictures. Oh, yeah. Boy, pictures, those kids the, alive. The pictures were amazing. Yeah, no, the artwork was yeah. amazing in those books and everything. All the imagery was and fantastic. And basically saying, like, this is the real Santa Krampus. Yeah. And the Santa we've been told is a lie, you know. Yeah. The old and, man version. Mm-hmm. And the kids need to be disciplined so Santa doesn't come for them. Mm-hmm. So if the parents don't discipline their kids, no happy Santa. Very bad, uh, you know, boil kids alive Santa. But um, pretty much from here, mm-hmm. it, it goes to the point where... We start seeing things happen around the town that were weird, right? They started seeing radiators were missing. Oh yeah, one guy's uh, wife's the hair dryer. Yeah, the hair dryer was missing. A po- all the potato sacks yeah. were missing, um, and uh, the father of Pitari, his name is Rauno, had uh, built something called a wolf pit mm-hmm. uh, to go ahead and try and trap what he thought were wolves killing reindeer mm. in the area. Yeah, because mind you, they live off the, the reindeer meat. Yeah. You know, they... There's one point they lost... Well, I, th- I, th- I believe they export the meat because yeah. they were talking about making the money off of it. So I believe the reindeer meat that they were trying to catch was literally for... Uh, for their money, for their that way of life. Because remember, uh, all they ate was uh, gingerbread cookies. Cause oh, he, he was yeah. cooking that... that pork that pork and they fuck you know they, yeah. they don't have anything to eat yeah but yeah it was a point that they were trying to gather all these reindeer mm-hmm. and it was about what eighty five thousand yeah. dollars worth of reindeer meat that. and then they were counting in the 22 percent vat rate mm-hmm. um so yeah that i mean it was a lot it was a lot of loss so <laughs> they thought it was wolves um also, too, because uh, P- I'm calling him P- Petri and uh, Juso. Yeah, the 22% is value added tax. Yeah. So when the kids actually went to see the uh, excavation, uh, it was in the, uh, they had to cross the border between Finland and Russia. They went through the gated, uh, the gate, and there was a hole. And that's why the parents thought that wolves from Russia came in to Finland to kill their deer, their reindeer. So they had you know, this little beef with Russia. Not. Okay, mm-hmm. so according to uh, looking this because I wanted to kind of get an idea. Um, it would have been approximately a hundred and two thousand euros, which is a ton of money. Um, yeah, that 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 hurts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That hurts. Not exactly. That hurts a lot. And so, uh, also what you, uh, Petrie, while he was looking through the books and whatnot, there was a page of human footprints, uh, basically Santa's footprints, you know, leaving a little trail, which he did see when his father woke him up. He looked through his window and he did see the footprints uh, pointing towards his windows, meaning that Santa was, you know, looking for him. I think I think I know what it was, was though. Uh, I will keep going. I think there was more details that probably weren't in the movie. No, no I, I was just you know doing a little footage while he was looking up the bad information. No, no, not that, not that, not that. I'm talking about what you're talking about. So it, it turns mm-hmm. out that uh, the character that we thought looked like an elf, right? Uh, his name or his character's name was Pitari's elf. So he was an elf. Holy shit. So he was probably the one sneaking up next to Pitari's window to make sure he was okay. Oh and he was turning off the lights. To not attract. Holy crap. I mean, because it doesn't make any sense that the Santa was up there and didn't take the kid. Because he took all the other kids. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So he sees the footprints. He thinks it was Santa mm-hmm. spying on him. But uh, all the other kids got taken in sacks. And that's when the whole wolf trap thing happened. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it more interesting, Wow, right? that's interesting. My bad. Yeah, is yeah. yeah. Because it adds. Try to, uh, it adds, yeah. but yeah, they, they, I mean, maybe it got cut out because of time, or maybe it's... Uh, Again. Maybe it's part of the shorts. There's two short films that came out in 2003 and 2005. 
this is a 2010 movie. Yeah. Um, which the short films are, I think they said that you could look them up on YouTube. Or if you do have the Blu ray version, which goes for about 40 to $50 on eBay right now, mm-hmm. um, those two short films are included in the special features. So possibly they included something in the short films that they didn't put in the full length movie. Oh, what's up, Rock? Yo, Rocky. Oh, shit, and, uh... Sonny DeHaze. Andres. And if you're still here, what's up, bro? My bad, I missed that. Uh, but, yeah, like Randall said, it leads to the uh, the wolf trap. Yeah. Which the, they had called... Co- well, Petari had set, them up, set mm-hmm. it up under the chimney in case Santa came in. Oh, yeah, a trap. That's what it was, because the dad didn't know. No, but I'm saying the, the, the wolf trap in the, uh, the hole... Oh yeah! Oh, you mean the whole roof trap? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, well, yeah. That's what I was saying before. That the dad thought that the the reindeers were killed by wolves, so they set up a trap. Yeah, a trap with uh, you know sticks facing up and yeah, put tree uh, trees over it. Instead, they caught and, a uh, human. <laughs> yeah, you see like a human hand, and the dad removes the kid. They don't want him to see that gruesome stuff. And yeah, the the kid goes up to his room, looks through the window. He sees his dad and his na- uh, his neighbor drag a body, you know, something in a in a body bag, mm. and it's just it's just old, uh, decrepit, ma- yeah, malnourished, uh, mal- yeah, ma- absolutely malnourished, skinny as fuck, old man with long ass beard, just dirty as hell. Yep. Uh, and to me, uh, at the moment, I was like, oh shit, this is Santa, you know. Uh, I don't know what you thought at the moment. I mean, I immediately thought it was Santa. Like nothing else made me think. Not Santa at this moment, because mm-hmm. all you see is this this decrepit old man, right, malnourished, mm-hmm. and with a long white beard, just like the Santa that we all know, exactly, right. Um, obviously, a little bit more beaten down, and then all you know is that something got digging up from up in the top of the mountain, mm-hmm. and all you see, a sudden, you find this guy here. Uh, and then they're like, you know, we need to get rid of this body because they were at this point they didn't realize that it was anything. Yeah, they thought it was just, they just, wander- just thought it was a regular a human. Yeah, you know? somebody wandering around. Um, and what? they thought that they were part of the excavation team on top. Oh. He thought he was related to that. But before that, the scene upstairs. Remember, they were telling him um, uh, it was like nighttime, and and they were like saying like, "Oh, fuck your." Your yeah, security yeah. Measure, measures and whatnot. Yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, the excavation team. Like, and like four of them just disappear out of nowhere. You see four helmets flying yeah. at the same time. So we're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, like what 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 could have like knocked out four men at once? Type. Yeah, shit. everything kind of gave a supernatural feel at that point. Um, like we had said earlier, mm-hmm. um, the guy that looked like an elf. We never got a full name from him and. Apparently we never did because his casting name is Pitati's Elf. Yeah, I see here. Yeah, well. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting um, to dig up more later on. Mm-hmm. So um, that guy had given a strict set of rules to the explorers saying, wash behind your ears, no cussing, no smoking, everything, smiles always. A lot of rules that are very specific to what you believe is supposed to be the nice list for Santa. Right? Um mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and butt stuff, of course. No butt stuff. Yo, Earl, Merle. I said Earl. <laughs> <laughs> or Earl. Uh, Earl Merle. Okay, um, uh, quick little uh, break. Uh, it is Merle's birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Feliz oh. cumpleaños. Is so, that why he's talking about butt, butt stuff? Hey, man. Yeah, birthday everybody, present. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> birthday surprise. Oh, fuck that. Like, cursing is a must. Nice. Yeah, but, so basically this guy was like making rules as of like the CEO of a company. Is, like, but he was the person like heading the excavation, so they had to listen to him, yeah. right? So, the fuck, <laughs> the fuck is Earl? Um, <laughs> My name is Earl. <laughs> but yeah, so we fast forward from there mm-hmm. to um, the old man in the hole, right? They get stabbed by a bunch of wooden stakes. Uh, yeah, oh, they yeah. believe to be dead. He has a stab wound, like yeah, penetrated on his like his side. Believe to be dead, mm-hmm. and uh, Rauno Petri- Pitari's father wants to like get rid of the body because he was like, we can't. One, it was illegal to have the wolf hole in the first place, mm-hmm. and two, you know, it's a dead human. 
So he's like, we need to get rid of this. And then they look at their... Uh, the friend, which is I, the, I, Amo, Amo, the one he came with the Santa outfit. Yeah, was that Amo? Amo, yeah. Yeah, so. Amo uh, came in and they saw their little saw that they used to cut all the pork mm-hmm. uh, pieces and reindeer pieces, I would imagine, as mm-hmm. well. And um, they're getting ready to just chop up a human because they're like, fuck it, we need to get rid of this body. So we're going to chop it up. And when they go to grab the arm to go ahead and th- put it through the saw, the arm retracts itself automatically. Uh, and they realize, oh, this guy's not completely dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just having little small tingles, yeah. you know? And that was awesome, too. Randall saw, like, the eye yeah, twitch. palpitates or whatnot. Yeah. So I was like, oh, shit, he's alive. And then the whole, he starts sniffing. The old man starts sniffing. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, shit, he smells the kid. And the kid's outside the window mm-hmm. peeping in. And all of a sudden, the dad turns around to see the wind, to look at the window, and you see in the in the back of the dad, the the, the old man just like open his eyes. Yeah, it was fucking creepy. Like, uh, like yeah, no, no, like the vibe, yeah. the vibe that that old man gave throughout that entire scene. Every time that you mm-hmm. they were concentrating on him, was super fucking creepy. Like he gave absolutely like that creepy, I'm gonna murder you vibe. Yeah, like, he absolutely, doesn't talk. I'm gonna he, murder you yeah. and eat you. He doesn't talk. His he, his looks are like really like slow and like determined on what he's he's planning. And what they would do with the with the lighting in his eye, yeah. right? That they would give this glare in his eye, like like he senses something. Mm-hmm. And when he sensed it, like his eyes go like this gold color. It was really or amberish, but mm-hmm. it was fucking really dope looking. Um, then all of a mm-hmm. sudden. Um, Pitari decides to get inside the slaughterhouse. Yeah, and that really gets uh, the old man uh, to do more than he was doing before. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden, you can see that he's like, "I sense the aroma of," uh, and this is going to sound pedophilic, of uh, of a child in this room. Yeah, he becomes more awake, more alert. Nice, Merle. Nice. See, before I even read that, I already knew. It sounds like my uncle when I was eight. <laughs> uh, Rocky, yeah, this movie, is, it's pretty good. It's not pretty good. It's, it's, no, great. it's, it's actually, great. It's actually really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the kid walks in. All of a sudden, the old man's like, oh, I smell something. Mm-hmm. And this is all us going off, like, you know, the concept that the Santa can kind of sense when a kid's been naughty. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, we're still thinking that it's Santa. That yeah. it's Santa Claus, right? Yeah, and then the dad uh, goes outside with the kid to talk to him. Like, you know, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be inside, grounded. And that's when Amo stays with the Santa. And That happened earlier. Oh, no, no. He that runs away. Earlier. Yeah, that sorry. happened earlier. That happened earlier. No, he runs away, remember? Yeah, but that happened earlier. Earlier? Yeah, because they come back and the guy's already bitten. Oh, that's what I was, I was leading I was, up to. I was, I was skipping that. Oh, part. skipping that. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, at this stage, it's uh, you know, the walkie-talkie starts going off. Oh yeah, the the Sub Zero Inc. is the walkie-talkie. Yeah. Dude, those are the excavators. Mm-hmm. Um. Because Santa stole the little jacket or whatnot. Yeah, from one of the people that 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 that, that were up there. That eventually, obviously, he killed. So the elf, yeah, the the, the Petri's elf was yeah, like, Petari's elf. Petari's, um, was like, oh, is Santa was, ready? Like, oh, is Santa ready to fly? Yeah, yeah, because uh, he would figure that he's still in an ice cube, and they were believing at this point. Now they believe that they actually have the a Santa, Santa in front of them. Mm-hmm. So they go ahead believing they have Santa, and uh, lock him up in a cage. Dress him up as Santa. Yeah, they got the Santa outfit from the the friend Amo because he was supposed to play a, a Santa on stage or some some. some I think location. it was no. I think it was that he goes to the houses. Oh, it's remember true. the earlier earlier uh, Pitari was talking about oh who was the Santa that came to my house. Oh, true. And he was like, oh, that was uh, mm-hmm. this guy, and your dad paid him. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah. So that's how they get the outfit, and then, yeah, they have him in the in a cage in the in the, in the pickup truck. I swear, that's and still that one of my scene, favorite scene. It's fucking great. That's should we tell? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Because they now they need to see it for themselves that they want that's to. That's fucking. 
So it's three men in the truck and the and, and the, the little, in the back seat. The little kid is in the back seat. Old creepy Santa's uh, in the cage in the pickup that truck. Camera angle. And the kid turns around and through the little window, you just see the cage and then the Santa just starts slowly, slowly looking down. at the child and, and you smiles, see the, yeah. And you just, see how the eyes go uh gold again. Yeah. It was just, it's creepy as fuck, you know. Yeah, it was really, really well done. Mm-hmm. Um, this is when they find out that they don't have the Santa. Uh, Petari's off comes out and investigates the cage and realizes, nope, this is a helper. This is not Santa himself. Mm-hmm. And we're like, what? There's more? This was absolutely better than Mother Krampus and Santa Claus. <laughs> This was, oh, Rocky, this doesn't touch in yeah. neither of them. Yeah, this doesn't touch neither of them. So, <laughs> so uh, they find out, okay, no, this is a helper. And then um, Pitali's elf is like, everyone, put your weapons down. Don't smile. Be quiet. Be yeah. quiet and don't cuss. Everything like that. Be nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, his helpers are watching. Yeah, he said helpers were like... And then that's when you realize lights go out. Yeah, you see shit running around. Yeah, like, oh, fuck. And then you see literally like hundreds of uh, naked old men. <laughs> literally naked. Naked old Santas, because yeah. they all look like Santas. They're all old white bearded men mm-hmm. running around and with pickaxes. Uh, pickaxes. With pickaxes. With a bunch of weapons. Naked, they all had different yeah. weapons. Shovels, pickaxes, everything. Dirty, bloody, so it's... Uh, all, yeah, like, everything. Mm. But, uh, this is where I told Mac, I was like, I get it. And this is why the representation that we know of Santa mm. are these faces. Like, yeah. the old white man with the white beard is because the helpers that help Santa catch the naughty kids... Mm-hmm. And take presents to the good kids is the helper and not actually Santa. Yeah. Um, so it falls into that Krampus kind of like vibe. And then we're like, okay, so when the fuck are we going to see like the real Santa? Yeah, we're like... Yeah. I'm here thinking, all right, if, the, if this representation of Santa is not the real Santa that we know, like, what the fuck is the real thing? And then... Uh, so Pitari, Pitari walks into that warehouse. There's a warehouse that he's like, oh, this is the last door, where there has a reference earlier in the earlier in the movie where he has an advent calendar. Advent calendar, and the last twenty fourth door, he puts tape. He fucking uh, staples it. Staples it. Doesn't want to open it. And juice. So his friend is laughing at him. But yeah, he said this is the last door, which is the uh, the hangar. He goes in and he's just petrified, looking up. And I'm like, Randall, is this, a, that. is this a giant Santa? Like. I thought we were gonna see like an old giant white man with a white beard, <laughs> something like that. Something, yeah. something like that. It was gonna kind of be ridiculous, but still be like, okay. No. It's much better. Now, actually. the unfortunate part, I guess, would be is we never got to see, unfortunately, the full fledged mm-hmm. monster uh, that would be Santa in this. All you see is a giant cube of ice, and you can basically kind of get a good idea. Mm-hmm. Of the appearance through the block of ice. Things all but chained what up, you yeah. definitely see are the very well-known, very uh, recognizable Krampus-style mm-hmm. horns. Uh, and they are hanging out of the ice. And everyone, all the radiators that were stolen from the neighborhood, the hair dryer yeah. that was stolen from the neighborhood. The sacks. Uh, the sacks, everything is there in this hangar. Mm-hmm. Because they had plugged up all the radiators and the hair dryer to try and bring down the ice that was holding Santa uh, encapsulated. Mm-hmm. And they had all the sacks of all the naughty kids already there waiting for him. So as soon as he got broken out of the ice, your kids are here waiting for you for yeah, you to exactly. boil them, uh, hit them with the switch and whatever you got to do uh, to so. teach them the mm-hmm. lesson. That they need to learn, right? For being naughty kids. Um, so, yeah. We never get to see a full glimpse mm-hmm. of the actual monster itself. And that was a, probably like, the only down for me in this movie. Because I yeah. wish there would have been at least a bit of a moment. Like, maybe 
if the ice would have broken that one second and then the explosion goes off. Something like that. Try, yeah, basically see the actual creature, Krampus. Uh, yeah. But I still got a good uh, reaction when they showed the horns. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, the horns. It, it looks great, yeah. man. By, by all looks at what you get to see looks fucking great. And even more when uh, Raono, Petari's father, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Aimo decide, okay, let's do something uh, extra here, you know? Um, do what hunters do. And chop the horns off of the... Yeah, they took that as a reward, I guess you could yeah. say, a trophy. Yeah. Which I thought they were going to only take one horn, but no. no. Those motherfuckers took both. <laughs> yep. I don't know how they carry that shit. It's, yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, they planted a few dynamites, C4s or whatnot, to blow it up. I thought this, the C4s were going to blow just up the break ice, the ice. Break the ice, and the creature would uh, yeah. come loose and, you know, cause all, you know, chaos, but no. Um, but overall, movie is great. Definitely to watch. You can watch it alone with friends. You'll definitely enjoy it. Uh, definitely check out the the small the short films on YouTube, which we need to do that ourselves. The ultimate ending is really good, though. Which ultimate? Ending? Like the ultimate ending after. Oh yeah, that. yeah, of course. You know, the ultimate ending is really good. <laughs> He's like, nah, fuck them spoilers. <laughs> Listen, I don't think a lot of people would watch this movie unless you kind of spoil that kind of shit, though. Oh, exactly. Um... Like that. That. Um, it's a whole different thing watching it too, because it was really fucking good. It was the acting, uh, man. The, everything was good. The acting on it was mm -hmm. good. The uh, the little bit of emotion they added to it too was good. Mm -hmm. um, you, we found out after the fact that the that the father and son, Pitari oh, yeah. and Raun, are actually father and son yeah, in real, real life. life. Oh, um, the ending was yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the ultimate ending was good. You know, uh, Pitari really. Stand the kid steals the show, man. The mm -hmm. main the main protagonist, the kid, uh, played by Oni Tomila. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right. He fucking knocked it out the park. His dad was fucking great too. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, it was just an all around great cast. Mm -hmm. um, set wise was fucking great. It has, uh, from what we saw, comparisons to uh, yeah. to John, John Carpenter's The, the thing. thing, yeah. You know, so set wise, it gives you that kind of a vibe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, exploration, explorers going into like, you know, snowy kind of environment and digging and doing all this stuff and then unveiling and releasing something as crazy as that. Yeah, it's not, it's not as gory as you could say the thing or anything like that, but it's still, it's still fun, man. It's still, you know, uh, has its little moments. Yeah. Uh, this movie's not gory at all, but it doesn't take yeah. away from, from it. Yeah, it doesn't have excess gory. Mm -hmm. It just has small little moments of like you know, good good amounts of like blood and stuff like yeah. that, or things that are kind of a violent act. Um, so yeah, I think the rated R is more so what you said. There was just moments yeah. that kind of bump it from PG thirteen to a rated R kind of point where it can't be a PG thirteen because they are doing things like butchering a pig. Yeah. Uh, you dead know, certain dead animals, the old naked men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's. Yeah, I'm not yeah. even. Gonna, you just gotta experience the old naked man. So, There's more details to all of that, but you have to experience. Yeah, that. and it does a great thing. Like take away the uh, let's say the excessive gore. Yeah. How good can the movie be? And this just proves that you don't need. Uh, What's up, Alex? You don't need that much gore to actually make a good film. Yeah. You know, and they, like I said. The, the yeah, and it, was, it yeah. wasn't even like a jump scary kind of movie either. No. Like it, it, it falls in line into a horror fantasy with comedy mm -hmm. in there too because there was a good little yeah. bit of comedic moments to it as well it wasn't as comedic as as you know you would think by it having that in in the genre realm you know mm -hmm. but definitely horror and definitely fantasy it had that mixture yeah. really well mm -hmm. placed you know uh which is another reason why i kind of place it in that uh kind of category as pan's labyrinth you know it's not obviously like i said it's not I would not compare this to Pan's Labyrinth as a film mm -hmm. itself, but it lands in that category of uh, that fantastical kind of environment, you know? Yeah. Um, it was It was just, and plus other language, right? Because most of it is all in Finnish. Finnish? Finnish? Is it yeah, Finnish? basically the only English-speaking uh, people are the British, 
in the beginning, the explor- exploration team. But that's about finish. it. Finish. Yeah, finish. Yeah, that's about it. But again, it's uh, it isn't finished, so you do have to read subtitles if you're into that. Which I, I have yeah. no problem. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't I bother that. me at all. I love that. You know, it if doesn't you do, bother if me. If you at do, all. I don't see if they have any, tr- you know, audio Evan translations. Who knows? They probably do have a version. Yeah, go buy the fucking movie. Or but like uh, <laughs> thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. Um. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, actually, the let me see if I can tag uh, Ronnie. Please. Who that? Who that? This who? is the person who provided the who that? Who that? not who provided, but I purchased. The, let me make sure that's right. But oh, yeah. um, uh, also the too, ornaments in the tree. Yeah. This movie, uh, its budget was about one point eight million euros, which about two do- uh, two dollars. <laughs> Two million U.S. dollars, and it actually grossed four million in the box office. So it made you know double uh, what they what they spent on this film. Uh, it was distri- distributed by a f- company called or oh, butcher this shit. <laughs> Oscilloscope, Oscilloscope Laboratories. It's an independent film. This this this. Sh- 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 I can't speak, bro. I have dyslexia. <coughs> But yeah, Randall. Wait, what is it? Here you go, Let me bro. See. Do me a favor, bro. And okay, which one are we looking at? That's the distribution company. Oh, um, um over here. oscilloscope. I said oscilloscope. Oscilloscope. Oscilloscope, man. Oh, which their fucking logo was amazing. It looked super retro. Yeah, they did a whole entire, like, very. Sci fi. Uh, yes, old sci fi monster kind of movie. Uh, kind of entrance. So, I tagged Ronnie's Boutique on there just in case. Ronnie's Boutique is the person that I bought these ornaments from. Uh, she is a... Uh, oh, she, a nice. Huh? A she. Yeah, she's a very awesome. uh, talented like creator and artist. And she does a lot of things that are all horror-related. Everything that she has on her page is basically horror-related. Maybe a couple of Disney things, but the majority of everything is every- is all horror um so uh incredible stuff um and i wanted it i've kept it in our last two reviews but it's always off to the side because we've had a third person here every mm-hmm. time like we had mike in one and then we had ellie in one so we was i wasn't able to properly mm-hmm. display it but i wanted to display it here but uh if you like you know this kind of art like uh what what she did with these ornaments uh they are like on wood uh kind of um like base and this isn't like a ceramic as much as it kind of gives that vibe and look because of the glossiness and all that on there um she did she did incredible work i no, did look amazing, fantastic man. the paint the job details on them is on it. Yeah. uh the little pug was a limited edition release from an artist in italy uh he sold out pretty quick out of all of them but uh yeah that's that's where that's from that is a ceramic piece so that would break if uh, if it fell on the floor. <laughs> but yeah, Ronnie Ronnie V's boutique. What are you doing? I wanted to pin it. On... Can you pin it? Or no? Oh, I can't pin on my end. It has to be pinned on the. Maybe I should log on. Yeah. So... Uh, but yeah. So and the snowman is a Wendigo. Um, made by Reese O'Brien. Um. He sells them on BIM too. I don't think there's any available right now. But Reese O'Brien is also the creator of Tiny Ghost. Um, but I think the piece has a different name for his version. But it's basically a oh, Wendigo. Oh, okay. It comes off. Yeah, yeah it comes nice. off. It has a different name, his version. But I'm trying to remember what it was called. But basically, it's a Wendigo. Uh, but yeah, so you were talking. The budget was two million. Two US million, and it made how much? Four million. And that was only in that was worldwide. Mm-hmm. And currently, the the DVD. Yeah, so the DVD on eBay right now, the actual DVD is twenty five dollars cheapest you could find, and Blu Blu Ray wise is forty four forty five dollars. So there's a, a rare uh, item 
if you don't have the if you don't want to spend that much money or you don't have that if you do have hulu it is on there it's also on pluto tv uh amazon prime as well let's see let me figure out what else you could watch this beautiful movie well we're gonna be watching that new year's movie soon too right the one yeah that, it's called um... new year's evil thanks to uh, my buddy uh will let's see here yeah we're trying to valdegeist that's what he calls it valdegeist so Valdegeist is spelled W A L D G E I S T. Um, it's also on Crackle for free as well. I think Crackle is only uh, put on the Sony Playstations, I believe, or maybe you could download it. I'm not sure there are options right now. Yeah, there you go. So that's that's what it's called, Valdegeist. This? Yeah. No, Valdegeist. Well, his version of it yeah. is called Valdegeist. But yeah, this movie won several awards in, in Finland. A bunch of random words I can't pronounce, but uh, it's it's great. It's it's great. <laughs> what was what was okay? Let's do this. Oh yeah, the Mac. original. Hey Mac, let's do. What's the original name? Do you remember? Did you forget already? Jew, Jew? not a Jew. It's not a Jew. <laughs> All right, here you go. <laughs> Of course, I have the volume down. Yeah. Jalapagai. 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 Oh, Merle's yes. present. Jalapagai. To Jalapagai? Yeah, he's going to jell you up, buddy. <laughs> Giggity. But yeah, uh, um. Jalapagai, which is believed to be the home uh, in, fin- in Finnish folklore. Yeah. You know, the actual representation of... Cr- of Santa, which that word Jalapagai is basically means Christmas goat. Um, you know, so yeah. Again, goes in line with the whole Krampus kind of vibe, right? Because Krampus kind of gives off that vibe mm-hmm. when it comes down to it. Like it's always that guy with horns. Shut up, my guy. Jell up a guy. Shut up, my guy. Shut up, my guy. So that's uh, oh, right here, man. But yeah, definitely a movie to check out. Uh, Listen, yeah. All in all, it was a very fun, like, Christmas movie, right? Um, it's not all about um, the concept of the, the whole gift giving. It, it did none, nothing with that. This was a Christmas movie that definitely did not have to do with the generic knowledge mm-hmm. of Christmas at all. At all. Mm-hmm. And I think that was very much a breath of fresh air with this movie. Um, all right, good night, Alex. Have a good one. Thank you for stopping by, sir. Um, but yeah, so I mean, all in all, it was just a really fun movie. Mm-hmm. Um, had nice little intense moments, had little moments that just kind of like had you, you know, on, on the edge a bit, just waiting for something to happen. Uh, especially in the scene when the, when the, when the, the old man's on the slab on the table and you're just waiting to see if he's just gonna snap yeah. up and do the undertaker and just like uh, <laughs> you know yeah full on one of those moments or what's gonna happen you know but ultimately we just got um oh shit nick what's up bro heartless weeb you still here man i just saw your comment yeah thanks for stopping by um but yeah so all in all just a really really fun horror holiday movie so i do have a question I know okay you've been asking the questions lately mm. um let's see i'm gonna get hit why you gonna get hit? Taking the shot. Let's say in this the situation where you're you're being attacked by a hundred was a hundred and ninety, hundred and eighty old wrinkly bald loose Ben with pickaxes and It was a hundred and ninety three yeah. or something like that. Or some some crazy number. You think just like uh like Pietari Peter Reed or whatever, Pai Pai uh you think you would come up with a plan that easy? No. Oh. Or no. like you would just try to fend yourself off and you know, just try to knock one out, boom, one by one. Yeah, I boom, think. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I think my my plan would have been. Uh, I mean, you don't have to be a little kid. You could just be. No, 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 no. I know. I, I don't think my plan would have been anything like what he came up with. I don't think I. I didn't. Even oh, think Rocky's watching the movie now. Nice, bro. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even bother like actually. Uh, 
thinking about the, what he ended up doing. You yeah, know? and, I, and I'm definitely not going to spoil it now, uh, Rocky, because I'd rather you catch that ending and be like, oh, shit, that's right. Yeah, and you, like what he comes up with as the plan is just and it's perfect. Yeah, when you're done watching the movie, comment on this video once we're yeah. done. Yeah, and uh, let us know what you think or what ideas or whatnot. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I don't think I would have come up with a, a great plan like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I think my my plan would have probably involved getting more guns or something. Right. <laughs> like I probably want like, we need to shoot all these old men, not understanding or realizing that you know we just had an old man that had a stake go through us a whole fucking wooden stake go through him and he's. Still walking around fine. So who knows what bullets would have done to them. Yeah. I mean, when you find out that they're actually Santa's helpers, mm -hmm. that's a whole thing. Uh, and then you also find out... Uh, yeah. See? that's Yeah, that was, that was kind of like the vibe that we got. My vibe was... And that was literally... Remember I told you? I was like, okay, so he's either a fucking elder elf or he's Scrooge. Yeah. But then I thought he can't be Scrooge. Because he's trying to give these guys, like, advice on how to be nice, you know, to survive. And Scrooge is not that type of guy. And yeah, Scrooge would have been like, man, fuck that dude in the red. But humbug and fuck Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, he, he probably would have, like, dig that motherfucker out so I can piss on him. Uh, <laughs> so it would have been something like that. But uh, <laughs> ultimately, like, like yeah, the movie was is just really good. And, and uh, Rocky, I hope you enjoy it, man. Mm -hmm. I hope you really enjoy it because definitely me and Mac did. Um, you know, even with the subtitles, like for me, I love I things care. with subtitles. It doesn't bug me a lot at all. It makes me actually want to learn Finnish. You know, was, yeah, the language Randall, is really cool. I told Randall during the movie, yeah. like this language is dope. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better. It's better than a lot of other languages. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go ahead and this other languages right now. But it's better than a lot of other languages. It's okay, I'll cover the mic. <clears throat> so, do you want to go for the rating? All right, yeah, yeah, let's go rating, let's go rating, let's go rating on this one, because uh, we still have another little extra surprise for all those that uh yes, that follow us here on uh, on Ram Dot Film Reviews. So uh, surprisingly, I was already thinking about the rating right before the movie ended, but I had to talking about it, it just made me love it even more, and like you know looking up in a little information. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Yeah. This movie all around had like Randall was saying. Uh, had comedic moments, had serious moments, suspense. Yeah. I was on my, basically on the edge of my seat, just like, talking to the fucking TV. Kid, don't do this. Kid, do this. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. All this stuff. So, you know, the movie made me feel like you know, I should have involved myself in it. So, yeah. it's rare for movies to do that. Uh, again, overall movie, I'm definitely going to watch again. Uh, on a different platform, but definitely going to look back into it. <laughs> Uh, so 9 out of 10, man. What about you? I literally land on the same spot, man. I'm Woo! actually a 9 out of 10 on this one. Um, as soon as you started mentioning what it's going for, also I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. Now I need to hunt this one differently because I want to have this. Uh, and I want to have that Blu-ray. That's what oh, I want. Oh, look at the cover, man. It's I want to have the Blu-ray. So for yeah. sure. Um, right? Yeah, I'm right in the snowmobile. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, man, like, absolutely got me with everything, man. The, the genuine, uh, like, heartfelt moments got you. The genuine uh, parts that are supposed to give you a little bit of a, of a holy shit moment got you. Everything just kind of just ran really well. The movie was, was filmed yeah. incredibly well. Landscape-wise was really incredibly well. Anything that they did with, um, with CGI was you know not nothing that you would really you know pinpoint yeah, as you, you as an be. issue you know everything was really well done uh directed incredibly well well written well casted everything was just on point you know i can see why it had such you know high reviews and why a place like Rotten tomatoes which mm -hmm. usually you know i don't like would give it like 90 percent on something like this because definitely is one of those mm -hmm. movies worthy of that like i'm not gonna say it's one of the greatest movies ever made but fucking man that movie was fucking really fun it was and good not your ordinary christmas movie exactly. but something to that it's it still has it still has and it still carries like a a good morality to it too right like in a oh. sense it still carries a bit of that you know what we forgot mm. the, the straw the straw kids the replacement 
Well, he replaces the bed. With... Oh, yeah. You know, no. Let's see that out. Let, them, okay. let, let that, let that but, be a part of it. But look, I spoiled a lot. Ooh, wow. Yeah, I like that. I'll, I'll show it in a bit. But yeah. look, look at that, bro. Oh, the my crates. God. That's gorgeous. Yeah. And that's that's what I was going to point out. You're going to notice why they call it rare exports. Yeah. I'll just uh, show you the towards, front, towards the the end cover. Of the movie too. Show me if it's so, it shows good in my no, I'm going to be delayed, so. So that's the Blu-ray version. Look at that. It's going for $50 on eBay. Mm. It's just beautiful, crisp. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to end up having to search for something like that because that is beautiful. Uh, and it does come with the two uh, YouTube uh, sure shorts as well, it. too. So. So yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, you can see it pretty good. Nine out of ten. Uh, so I, I do thank you guys for coming in and joining us for yeah. another random film reviews. Um, so we always keep mentioning uh, our uh, our the giveaways, our RAM giveaways. Yes. And we included like shitty items, not, not shitty, but you know things that you might not even listen. Have. Listen, listen. This is this this is the way we're gonna handle <laughs> listen, this. Right? Linda. Hold on. Let me let me bring uh, let me bring this down for the moment because the uh, Ronnie tree down. Yeah, Ronnie's Ronnie's boutique tree is gonna come down real quick. Here's and sure. uh, the Volta guys has yeah, to come down. Yeah, you the pug. The pug can stay. The pug can stay because you know this is my first Christmas without him. Um. So, if you want to think about it a cool way, it would oh, be cool. oh, these are the films that they themselves watched. Yeah, you know. And Fans. When, and when we get there to the top. <laughs> you can know. be like, I have this movie. Side they films. used in their own Xbox to watch. <laughs> <laughs> At two in the morning on a Tuesday night. That's the stupidest shit I probably ever will say on this. Here's, here's. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so the DVDs you shall be getting. Uh, let's do it in this order because this is the best order. You're going to be getting, in the giveaway, <laughs> the trilogy of La Llorona. La Llorona. Yeah. You're going to get the amazing, incredible representation of Santa Claus battling the devil. Mexican Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Hey, remember this. Versus Pitch. This is $15. Yeah. Listen, it has value to it. Whether you like it or not, the DVD itself has value to yes, it. Sir. It's a cult classic. classic. And then we finish it off with good old Soul Keeper. Oh, hello. Let's take it so away. Soul Keeper. Um, which, in all reality, we actually gave that movie a pretty good review. Yeah. That movie was actually really fun. We actually enjoyed this movie a lot. Um, I think the only thing that Mac kind of like dug at was the monster's appearance. Yeah. You don't like the way the monsters look. And I was like, you know what? I'm okay with it. Because, you know, I kind of understood sci-fi movies. The first time they do something like that. And, you know, it wasn't like they had an insane amount of budget. CGI wasn't really at the place where it could, where it is like now. So they had to go with puppetry. And uh, in some of the, the after uh, stuff, you kind of see um, uh, he probably means Soul Keeper. He goes, yeah. Oh, maybe. Um, but yeah. So, and then plus, you know, you get to uh, see a little bit of Debo. You know, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. He uh, he's he's a part in this movie too. That movie had a lot of good humor to it. I thought it was uh, really well written when it comes to like a lot of the interaction. But the ending was the one that destroyed me. Because I was Correct. like, you know, they could have given the second brother a chance to have a moment with his other brother. But they kind of mm. they kind of just kiboshed that in a weird exactly. way. So there is some... Uh... Oh, uh, Harless is saying he thinks puppets are better than CGI. I agree. I miss the era of mm -hmm. like puppetry monsters and stuff like that. Um, I think some of the greatest things we've seen, like American Werewolf in London, is one of the best like kind of puppetry done yeah. ever, man. Like it's so great, you especially got, that transformation. The, the howling to me is like the best. Yeah. To me, even though you got 
the Werewolf in London. Even when you get weird shit like the Labyrinth, just, man. Like yeah. Labyrinth is like one of those weird movies that's all puppets, but man, yeah. you got it house, works. You got House. Again, mm. this is not horrible. You got TMNT. Oh, what was the? There was one that we watched. The one with the with the giant fucking the boneyard. The boneyard. The yes. boneyard. With the fucking giant, <laughs> what was poodle, it? Was the poodle? The giant poodle at the end. The uh, poodle was fucking great, you know, or right. uh, or even brain dead. Yeah, but Nick, nowadays it's just CGI. When they get the, you know, you have a timeline, you have a budget, they rather spend so much. I mean, the that, crazy that, thing is that CGI isn't cheap either. Yeah, like exactly. when you're doing that kind of CGI, it's not cheap. They it's just a quick fix, uh, other than you know taking time to build something. I mean, there's certain things that I can understand. Like you can't build. Like the fucking monster at the end of Suicide Squad, you can't build the damn, the damn star. Yeah. That thing is like, you know. Yeah, Underworld too. The Lycans, uh, Rocky. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of the Underworld show was great. Oh, exactly. Yeah, no, they, yeah. I mean puppets are great, man. And in this one, understandably, they're low budget puppets, but you know, it worked for the movie. Close up shots, yeah, you know. The close up shots yeah, are rough. All overall, like I said, this is sci fi's first. Was it production? Movie? Yeah, it's their first production. Back in two thousand one, I believe you got yeah. Santa Claus, the Mexican, and uh, this is the director's cut yeah. version, by the way. And uh, do you want to say about this? Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it now. Okay, and then you got Santa Claus, the cult classic Mexican film. It is dubbed over to English, English, so yes. none of it is in Spanish. And you got the uh, <laughs> the trilogy here called the best. Uh, oh yeah, Aliens, dude, Aliens. Yeah. Fucking yeah, Aliens was so fucking good. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. The squibs. <laughs> so yeah, you got the trilogy of La Llorona, which again, this is uh, this is did one somehow. This is a must to have in your collection. Yeah, you know, and we're giving that every up. time you hate yourself a little bit more. Watch that movie and understand. There are per- people you need to hate more. They're perverts that you need to hate more. <laughs> well, there are well, we're also perverts in the movies. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, remember the old men. So, yeah, the this, old is, men this is a must. He started, like, your... dropping his pants in the middle of the street. Yeah. This is a must out <laughs> for your collection. You know, we're giving that up from our collection to pass it on to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I highly to... went out of my way for us to watch those parts two and three and <laughs> fetch this one. Oh, I dug to try and get this one, so you're gonna enjoy that. Yeah. But okay, so along with Soul Keeper, um, I had mentioned it already in my own personal life mm-hmm. on my on my IG. I was doing some art, and uh, I started working on two pieces. One is one of my canvases of uh, of something I'm doing for my grandmother, and oh, then nice. uh, the second piece is something that I had talked with Mac early on after we watched this movie. That I wanted to do, and I wanted to make it to give it away uh, on here. It's still not completed, but you can see the progress of where it's at right now. It still needs to be uh, on the final touches of being primed and then painted. But uh, one of the significant things in the movie Soul Keeper is that the item or the... uh, Damn, what's the word for it? The artifact that's used is the rock of lazarus which is supposed to be called the resurrection stone uh it does fall into biblical like theology and all that kind of shit that's what they use to kind of create the storyline behind this which leads to being able to be immortal and live forever basically you use a stone to pass your soul from one person or another Mm. person another person that's what the soul based concept is on uh soul keeper hence so keeper so i have gone out of my way to create a replica version of the rock of lazarus and uh here it is i'm gonna bring it up to the camera okay it just looks like a white piece of yeah right now it just looks like a white turd um so on the front side i still have to clean up the front but this is the the locked version of the stone and then on the other side will be the unlocked version of the stone which is when it's transferring the soul to the other soul it's gonna have a hole in it so you can go ahead i'm gonna put a rope on it so it can be like a necklace and somebody can choose to have it in the your soul is locked in this body version looks or good, looks great dude. transferring it over uh to the new body so that's gonna be part of the giveaway 
a handmade prop replica of uh, the Soul Keeper stone or rock of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. So, we weren't going to end there. We want to make this giveaway a little special. We want people to understand that uh, we are trying to really, you know, give back to people who watch us. And even though at this point, uh, we are, I don't know, how many, how five, many reviews? Five away from 100 followers. No, no, but how many reviews do we have? Oh, I mean, shit. have we done already? I'm trying to remember. Let's all go to the lobby. Oh, actually, just look at this. The chart. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, that has We've been done, up. yeah. We've done 39 reviews. Wait. Um... Yeah, we've done 39 reviews already. So 39 movies that we've reviewed on here. Um, and, you all have and we are five away from 100, uh, from our first 100 followers, Instagram right? Instagram followers, yes. Um, now, I don't know how many of those followers actually pay attention to every detail of what we do. I've said it many times. My thing isn't about that with this. My, my, my thing here is... To give back to those who follow and who actually watch these things with us and enjoy watching us talk about these fucking movies yeah. and laugh about shit, fuck up shit, yeah. talk about how Mexico's in South America when it's not, whatever. Yeah, watching me fuck up and fumble and just mess up things. It's whatever you know, it is, just, or have them pronounce yeah. you know the original name of Santa, or you know whatever thing that you know may happen. That's fun on this show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys have been here for the, the ride. Listen, you know, we, we have so much fun on here. You know, whether you guys just view us uh, afterwards or tune in for a few minutes, it's still yeah helping us somehow. And like I said, even though these movies seem shitty, we, we want to include something We're going to add something else from the world of what we do, right? Like, yeah. And a lot of what we do here is uh, we are collectors by trade. We are lovers of of many collectibles, from movies to comics to uh, you know toys, action, yeah, figures, action figures, toys, vinyl records for me, world, like yeah. so many things, like uh, VHS tapes, everything. We're all, all all over the world, and through this, we come into possession of a lot of nice little artifacts that tie into all of that. Now, some of these things that we're about to like show you don't tie into anything specific with any of the stuff that we've done so far. This is just a part that ties in directly to Ram.Film Reviews. But we want to juice it up a bit. We want to give you guys a little bit more. And Mac went out of his way to add in some extra things to give this giveaway a little bit of that, a little bit of that girth, a little bit of that, you know, butt stuff vibe. It's, it's, it's giving you a little bit of all of that. And uh, we hope that you know, it helps and motivates people, you know, a little bit more to just, you know, see what we do and follow us up a little bit more. Exactly, and Nick. Exactly. Just a tip. Just exactly. a tip. So this, uh, this next item yes. was given to me by the beautiful Placata. And uh, I know he's, he doesn't mind me giving this to somebody that's going to enjoy it. Yeah. But this is Captain America 112. Yeah. Uh, picture frame or art frame. The wood frame. Wood frame, there you go. Yeah, it's a solid solid wood. Still sealed, basically. Yeah, actually, you know what? It does tie in to, to the movie somehow. Right? It ties into Santa Claus. You know why? Because it's also made in Mexico. <laughs> in Mexico. It's also made in Mexico. So, you know, this ties into Santa Claus. So, so still, you're going to get this Captain America frame that yeah. still has intact Protection, with the protectors. Marvel seal here. Yeah, everything is intact. and. It's uh beautiful. Yeah, and this was part of, uh, this was actually first released through Kirkland's, mm -hmm. which, you know, it, it, they, they've always carried a lot of dope shit. Um, and it does have, like, the old Marvel logo in the back, or the older mm -hmm. version of the Marvel logo in the back. So you're going to get this Captain America uh, wooden frame added in there for the giveaway. I wish I yeah. Just put it there, it's fine. If you want to introduce this okay. One. So, the most random item is probably going to be this next one. Yeah. 
because Captain America kind of falls in line into a lot of what our world of stuff, which is, yeah. again, comic books, collectibles, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And even though this next thing I'm going to show is a collectible, it's a collectible that has nothing to do with any of this at all. And I don't think it's tied into anything that we've watched. No, but it's the... I'm trying to find some correlation. Was there anything in I Drink Your Blood that had to do with it? I mean, Petri, Pie Tree, you know, there's a pie in there, I don't know. But hey, I don't know, when you're watching one of these Wait, films... Is there any movie that took us to the moon? When you're watching one of these films, you could take a bite so. out of something. I'm trying to remember if there's anything... Well, I mean, the Holy Mountain was basically... Thanks, Killing. It went... <laughs> no, that's right. Thanks, Killing did go to space. Okay, so we'll use Thanks, Killing as a reference to this one. It's that's the only one cool. that went to space. When why I'm saying space is because what you're going to be getting is also a Funko Walmart exclusive of Moon Pie. Woo. It is a Moon Pie, which is the only reason I'm referencing anything that has to do with space. Um, now, this pop in perfect mint condition is valued at uh, $40. PPG, yeah. So that's what you're getting for uh, right here. Now, the pop itself may have some like exterior like box issue in the back but nothing there, yeah. nothing Some too ticks. nothing too damaging that would uh you know really kill too much of that value so you're still going to be getting a pop that's up to 40 dollars in value and you know how funkos are funkos tend to fluctuate so much so it can go higher than that nice because yeah. i'm gonna tell you one thing i have not seen this thing at all ever like the first moment he took it out of the box i'm like they made that <laughs> I mean, I know they made a lot of snacks, but I didn't know they made this one. And I've been craving moon pies for, like, a bit. Uh, just like I was craving the fudge mm-hmm. rounds. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, so you're going to get uh, this yeah. this PPG-valued, $40, $40 valued uh, moon pie Walmart exclusive Funko Pop. And then we're going to end it with something we haven't watched on this uh, on the show at all yet. Mm. We've both experienced this movie. And you're already showing enough of it, I think. Oh, so yeah. just <laughs> just bring it out. It's uh, Carrie, the beautiful sissy Carrie, yeah, in the in the dress before she mm-hmm. gets you know dripped in blood, right? This, blood, yeah. Yeah, this is when she already has the crown on, has the flowers in hand. Uh, it is also a Walmart exclusive. Mm-hmm. Uh, this pop itself is valued about anywhere between eighteen and twenty dollars mm-hmm. right now. So just in the two pops alone, you're getting sixty dollar value. That's not even counting everything else and including my heart and uh, art going into exactly. that, you know. So, um, you know, this is more valuable than this shit right now. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but no, the reality yeah. is this is this is going to be your giveaway package. Uh, we're five followers away. Uh, I'm going to create a little uh, post and we're going to put something together and we're going to come up with a hashtag. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be something that you can't really connect to any other giveaway or anything like that. It has to be something that we can look up easier. And we're going to make it a hashtag-based thing mm-hmm. um, where you're going to be able to tag people to go ahead and follow us to. Yep. Uh, kind of the same method you get with all the fucking uh, giveaways that you get. But we're going to actually do it. We're going to fulfill the giveaway and actually show you guys who wins and all that stuff. We're going to go live. We're going to run. Uh, <laughs> Rocky, Rocky said, damn, I got to find my DVD player. Uh, we're going to run the live, uh, the giveaway live. No, this moon pie. Um, no, this moon pie. <laughs> Notice moon pie. Nice. Mm. Yeah, right? No, Notice the moon pie. But um, we're going to do something in that vein. So it's going to be something like that to go ahead and get people to hashtag it uh tag it sharing the stories mm-hmm. for extra entries type of thing and uh yeah, um, you know the deets. all the details will be put together for you guys and you know we just ask for that we ask for that bit of you know participation and look at what you get in the participation yeah. you know uh like if we put this into value so we got 60 this is maybe around good 50 to 20 dollars a frame so that's what maybe a good eighty. I'm listen. I failed math like every year, oh, so no, don't no. ever ask me about math. So Quick sixty math. plus fifteen, and then you got the the DVD fifteen Santa Claus. Oh yeah, Santa Claus is valued at fifteen. You got this. Uh, that was like ten, 10 bucks. And then Soul Keeper giving what five? Yeah, 
And then uh, I'm not going to put any value on the art piece because I, I don't know what to price my art yeah, at, at all. Good. So already you're over 100 bucks, over 100 And that's bucks. not even counting uh, the, the handmade replica of the stone. Mm. So you're already talking about a $100, value, $100 value giveaway. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we get to announce it basically on Christmas Eve. You know, kind of give you guys our that little present from us. Like this is going to be our present to a fan somebody who follows us a friend fan yeah wherever. who follows us here and listens to our shit us based right and enjoys it huh us or worldwide where are we gonna do it, gonna ship it? oh i'm okay with anything yeah, i don't think right. i mean i don't know how many outside of the united states people we have we got one follower from mexico <laughs> konichiwa bitches <laughs> um <laughs> but you know right. i mean if we have to figure out some imported shipping then i'll figure that out yeah um but you know i mean it would be preferable if it's within the united states price wise because you know that frame is not you know light right. <laughs> this is gonna go in a nice big box and, and i'm sweet. and i'm very protective with how i package shit yeah, we both so are. i yeah both of us are when we ship shit out like everything like pops go in sorters everything else these go with bubble wrap inside and then outside this frame's gonna definitely be uh, very interesting mm -hmm. to package up, so everything's gonna be like that. Um, but yeah, ultimately this this is what we wanted to do. Uh, it started as me kind of telling Mako we should do a giveaway mm -hmm. when we hit a hundred, and slowly just kind of started steamrolling into a little bit more, a little bit here, a little bit there, yeah. and we want to make the first giveaway special. Um. And we can do them in additional milestones. So right. for the first hundred followers, we want to do this. The next one can be for the next five. When we have when 500, we hit five hundred, yeah. and then when we hit a thousand, mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. If we ever get to that, if not, honestly, like, hey, we do a random giveaway of maybe one item or <clears throat> yeah, we'll do. We'll do like maybe that. we'll celebrate like uh, the hundredth review. True, about thirty nine. Might do a hundredth so. review. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's gonna be things we'll do. You know. There's going to be things we'll do, and we might do random giveaways on a random live just for the fuck of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if we get, you know, more followers watching the live all at once, we might be like, fuck it. I might go I'm ahead not, yeah. and do something crazy. A like, live giveaway. Yeah. yeah. You know, it can happen. But the idea is, you know, we want to get more out of the people watching. And we mm -hmm. want people to participate with us, you know. And yeah, you're giving, us, you're giving us your time, and yeah. we're just giving back, you know. Yeah, some way, and we love this again. We love this, and even if it stays within the close one hundred, I'm comfortable with that. I'm okay with that because we've said it plenty of times here, and I know I get repetitive when I say it, but it is the most meaningful thing about this whole thing, and it mm -hmm. is the fact that all this is basically just therapy for mm -hmm. me and Mac. And we hope that it becomes therapeutic for you guys as well who joins us and listens to us to, to, just to talk shit. Exactly. Um, this is our, you know, a version of one of our escapes for us from, you know, anything that might be bugging us. We might be having a bad day and it's just like, fuck it, let's just throw on a movie, let's yeah. watch it, let's get on that microphone um, behind the camera and talk about it. And uh, that's what's become the beautiful thing about this. So exactly, Rocky. It's a vibe, you know, and you know we're, eBay, yes. we're glad that uh, that some people you know join us in this and enjoy this, and uh, and even some that watch it after the fact and let us know after. Like Iris is one yeah. who tends to watch it after and then lets us know, like, damn, you guys did this, you guys talked about mm -hmm. that, whatever. We've even motivated other people to watch a movie. Like we had Angel go out and watch a movie. Tapes, yeah. yeah, he went and watched the movie because of the way we talked about it. So. That we can help motivate or inspire people. And Rocky's watching fucking this now. Yeah, he's watching it. You know? If that's what this leads to, that's, that's fucking great, you know? All we can mm -hmm. do is just have fun here, talk shit, and enjoy the time. And uh, escape. No, exactly. And, like, Randall basically, you know, hit it on the nail. Uh, <laughs> Martillazo, uh, hijo puta. So, yeah, overall, I'm glad that, you know, we got this little care package for you guys. Yeah. Uh, felt like the right moment even though we haven't hit the 100 which doesn't matter overall yeah. just showing you that you know we always kept talking about a giveaway and we didn't really show much 
Um, but yeah, this is yeah, your I, chance. I, uh, I, that's my fault because I mentioned it so fucking much. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Talk about it so much. <laughs> so yeah, we gotta get the the viewers that have been live here. I mean, yeah. that, that came on tonight. Yeah. Uh, an entry, and then the first time we mentioned the the entry, those people it was like eight people at the time at the moment. I don't know if you remember them. I remember but, the majority of who was on there. But yeah, again, we'll announce the giveaway soon. We'll take a picture and post it up as a separate post, and give you, you know, a close up of what's going, what's going to be in it. Yeah. Uh, again, just thank you for joining us. Hopefully, like this also helps you with your mental health somehow. Uh, if not, you know, try to find the, your way, your own way to <clears throat> escape. Reach out to us if you don't know how to talk to us. I don't know. Just everybody has their. Uh, Randall, help me here. <laughs> Fucking. I love when that happens. Like, it's just that, that train of thought moment just goes, poof. Where was I? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, every, I mean, and yeah, me and Mecca talked about this a lot. Like, we all have our own way that we escape. We all have our own way that we feel uh, comfortable to open yeah. and speak or reach out or whatever. And for some of us, it's the opposite. For some of us, we'll hold ourselves up. And, you know, go full fetal for a day or whatever and then crawl back out, you know. But the point is, you know, we always reach out to the point of saying, like, if if you ever feel that bad, you know, reach out. You know, and we always want to tell people who watch us, you never know who might be going through it. And all it takes is just asking a question. All it takes is being like, yo, how are you doing? Like, yeah, or, yo, you all right? Something that simple. They might not mm. give you the response that is going to be like telling you that something's going on. But it's enough of a notification for somebody to be like, there's somebody out there who actually realized that I'm quiet mm. or realized that I'm not speaking or something like that. And that sometimes is just enough to get somebody through a bad, bad day. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are hurting in the world right now. Mental health is really one of the biggest problems in the world. I know COVID is still out there and I know COVID's destroyed a lot of lives and killed a lot of fucking people. Mm -hmm. I'm not taken away from that, but mental health is a really big issue worldwide right now. And, uh, and it's become a problem for a lot of people. And it's a lot of, uh, there's enough people also that don't pay enough attention to that concept and believe that somebody's just being a pussy or somebody's just mm. being like an idiot or being stupid or whatever and i yeah. hear that kind of shit all the time where somebody's like ah you know people got it worse no fucking duh dude i understand that shit yeah, like i know people got it worse doesn't take the fact that you're what you're going through doesn't have any meaning which yeah. it does it's your own it's your own world exactly doesn't and mean what i'm going through is less the more Randall's going through or not. Yeah. It's just, you know, supporting each other. and Yeah. There's people out there in the world that, you know, they might look at you as like, oh, toughen, toughen up, which we understand that. But it doesn't mean like, oh, you know. How There's a say, difference. Just push away, push away your, your emotions or feelings. Yeah. Because that for me, I tried doing that and it made me feel like a robot. And I didn't feel like basically human. I was just getting worse. Yeah. So pay attention to your, you know, to what you're going through. Um, I know people say, oh, I just, you know, get a snap out of it. Yeah, eventually, but you don't know how people process things, how long it might take or whatnot. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, that just, you're just coming off as an asshole. Yeah. You know, just snap out of it, like, like, thanks, you know. Yeah. And that person might just go in a deeper void, you know. Yeah. Um, again, go at your own pace. Find out what type of help you need seek out professional help some people might not want to seek therapy help thinking that they're crazy you know, crazy people non-crazy people will seek help it doesn't mean because you look you find a psychologist psychiatrist that you're crazy no yeah you might just need uh somebody to help you with you know a different perspective of what you're going through you know somebody in the outside of what you're going through um and sp speak speak to somebody at least one person even if it's a stranger that doesn't know your life, mm -hmm. that might that you feel that may not judge you, not that people will judge you, but you know it's easier to talk to strangers than maybe your close fa your friends or family if at that. But find somebody, you know. Yeah. Don't stay quiet. It's gonna, you know, it's not good. You you, you know it. You know, if you feel lonely, you're not alone. I know it's cliche as fuck, 
but you know just try a little bit you know try a little harder than what you you're doing right now yeah and it'll be worth it but, yeah yeah it's a like simple a, hike can help make somebody's day exactly yeah, Nick. and that's like why i always go back to one of my favorite little pieces that i have here which is you know uh some days are better than none because in the at the end of the day like it doesn't matter how many bad days you have in a row all it takes is one good day to make everything so much mm-hmm. better and a day getting better can be as simple as like what uh artless weave is saying you know it can be a high that can make a day mm-hmm. better it can be a win in anything it can be a win like for me in pokemon cards i pull that fucking card mm-hmm. that's gonna be a win that gets me over for a day or it can be me painting or it can be you know you getting that 140 dollar item exactly. for a dollar at a fucking swap shop exactly. you know whatever it can be you know it can be anything that's a win that uh goes ahead and makes that day better it can be the new job it can be anything that can motivate you um you have to search for those positives you have to try and have that mindset because a negative mindset is never going to be like beneficial but the idea is you have to go through it the way you feel most comfortable mm-hmm. going through it and don't listen to outsiders that don't understand how you function because not everyone is alike not everyone brains functions the same way the way mm-hmm. i handle my pain is going to be different than how mac handles his pain the way i handle my frustrations my anxieties or my depression or whatever always going to be much different than how the next person does so just you know people to understand and respect that and you know when you belittle or or you know kind of degrade somebody who feels a certain kind of way because they feel a certain kind of way in those moments you know it just man it can be so destructive so you know just always keep that in mind because it can be really shitty Mm -hmm. it can be really shitty but yeah so enough with the with us with the rant there on mental health again that is that is what uh what motivated this you know because we have two dudes that go through their own mental health uh yeah issues and mm -hmm. then we have two dudes that love movies and love horror more more than anything but love movies in general Mm -hmm. and love talking about it and ultimately it ended up in this and now we're here and now we have a hundred plus you know dollar giveaway here for people who watch us and enjoy us talk about you know our shit in the most non-professional kind of setting in the most non-professional version of talking and this is coming from somebody who works in a broadcast like professional setting like i work in radio so if I needed to get stupid professional, I can get stupid professional, but I just feel less tied down and I feel more comfortable in this kind of setting. Mm-hmm. It just feels nice to do this. And even though I still get like, you know, super uh, very specific with words sometimes uh, that I end up using uh, exactly. things that are quite exquisite or so, unique. Yeah. Back to the mental health <laughs> So one of my favorite, well, my favorite rapper called Vinny Paz, in one of his songs, he does say, "Why would you?" Tell Thank you, Hardest Weave. I appreciate that. Why would you tell a person that they were childish without an understanding of the pain that they surround in? Yeah. So what Randall was saying, you know, you know, you 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 tell somebody, you know, why are you acting like this? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Who knows what the fuck they're actually going through? Uh, and again, this is just uh, the perspective of. Uh, of a man i can't say about women or whatnot i know they go through their stuff but as men you know as a child as, as a child you say you know you get told Be toughen up you know don't cry that's for pussy that's for babies don't share your feelings and he, that fucks us up you know it fucked me up just holding in everything you know until i was like you know what i have a right to fucking express myself and it's been the best shit I've been doing it for the past few years, you know, talking to myself, talking to therapists, talking to friends of how I feel and whatnot. It's not, it's nothing feminine or nothing sissy like, you know, and just, you know, start little by little. Don't, don't think crying is for fucking wimps or women only. You're fucking human. 
that's basically it. We have tear ducts for a fucking reason. Exactly. So <laughs> don't. Listen. And it's not only for onions. Yeah. Don't don't listen to society or these people with a you know one track to track mind or whatnot. Just yeah. Be yourself and be there for others, man. At the end of the day, it's not about you or me or Rand or nothing. It's about everybody. It's about you. I mean, for us, it's about you guys. You know, this is what we're doing. It helps us, but at the end, like, we want to do it for you guys too. Yeah. And yeah, I just want to say that, man. Uh, you know, just to cut things out. What did, what did, what did Nick say? He said, "Finding a hobby, inventing is the best therapy. Great show. Keeping it real is the best." Oh, speaking about shows, Nick does have a YouTube. Oh, cool. Uh, I think it, uh, he has it as Heartless Weeb as well. Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, um, check it out on YouTube, Heartless Weeb, or Heartless Art. How do you have it on YouTube? Uh, he goes on and speaks about his manga collection, amazing collection, fucking big-ass manga collection. Uh, let's see, does he have his YouTube book? There you go. Yep. Yeah. YouTube, Heartless Weeb, just as you see it on the chat. Uh, he has, I think, already over is it 500 followers? He's at 655 subscribers. Congratulations, bro! You've been working hard at it. Yeah, got you 656. I just added you, bro. There you go. One more subscriber, man. See, so helping each other out, man. That's the best thing to do. Yeah, a lot of manga hauls. Yeah, yeah. it's all manga hauls, right? It's, yeah, it's, yeah a lot and of Nick manga is stuff. Nick is blunt like us. Nick is funny as fuck. Dark humor, bro. I mean, I don't know how you're doing it on YouTube and holding back. You know what I want to get? I want to get Berserker. Yeah, talk about talk, talk to Nick about Berserker. I'm sure he could tell you maybe where to get it. Berserker is enough. such a good fucking like all I've seen is the the anime man, but it's so mm. fucking good. I think it's expensive as fuck. Maybe the manga. Uh, we have again, a hardcover at Corka. Yeah, yeah nice. Contemplating oh yeah, I saw it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. But yeah, Nick is amazing. He's professional. What the fuck did he put now? Yeah, see, Berserker is fucking fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. Berserk. Berserk. Uh, Berserk. Oh, Berserk is from yeah, Jay Silent yeah, Bob. Yeah. I want to Berserk. Some Berserk or something. Yeah. But yeah, check out Nick. Uh, that's his IG handle, his YouTube handle. Uh, maybe Twitter. I'm not sure if he has that. Uh, Rocky said, true. Fuck society. Got to keep it real. We're human. Got to feel. Yeah, did you just drop a bar? <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. I know. I think Rocky, you were probably yeah, right. Lyrics. Shit. I forgot. Fuck society. Got to keep it real. We're all human. Got to feel. Yeah, so but thank you guys. You know, I had to get a little not personal, but you know, a little real. You know, behind what we do here. Yeah. So you got this giveaway. Perhaps maybe maybe we might add a little bit more. Maybe not. I don't know. But stay tuned. And uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, you want to add something else? Okay. No, I think that's good, man. I think that's honestly good. At least not be done. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, technically it's already Christmas Eve. It's already the 24th here on the East Coast. Um, the West Coast is two hours away from it, from being in Christmas Eve. But, uh, you know, for us here in Miami, you know, we want to wish you guys a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, uh, and all the other ones kind of gone away already, like Hanukkah and and Kwanzaa and, and all Shonica. that. So, so every, uh, and, uh, oh, damn, what's the other one? Um, oh, shoot. you said Kwanzaa? No, 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 no. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about oh, Festivus. Happy Festivus. What the fuck is that? That's from Seinfeld. Um, oh, <laughs> Fadi will probably get a good laugh if he. But to um, I, I'm I'm thinking it's a, it's Festivus, right? Yeah, Festivus. I was right. Holiday, yeah, which is some, which would have been yesterday, which would have been the twenty third. Festivus. Oh, fuck it, we're on time. I'm good. Uh, I said the ammo. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, Merry Christmas, fucking guys, like Nick said. and Yeah, Merry uh, fucking Christmas. Christmas Eve, Christmas, whatever. You know, for us Hispanics, we're a day earlier, I guess. Well, I mean, we know, because we do the thing where we wait till midnight of the 24th yeah. to open the gifts for the 25th. Because mm -hmm. that's the only day we decide to believe that midnight is actually the following day. Because other than that, oh, when it's like 1 a.m., no, todavía es miércoles, mijo, que te... No, no. Yeah, other, yeah. For us, the only day where midnight is actually the next day is fucking Christmas. Metal poetry. Metal po <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. The sign post. See, there you go. Rocky got oh, that. Oh, he knows it now. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, so yeah, that's usually how it goes. Like the midnight on the twenty fourth is when we open gifts normally. We mm. and then obviously for for uh normal United States uh it's you know Christmas morning, Christmas yeah. Day morning. True that. But yeah, we'll be back for a New Year's review. Yeah. Thanks I'm so excited for that one. For that will look like a good review we'll, too, uh, too. Check out Will's page, which is the underscore book underscore abyss. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great comic book collector. He has amazing books. He has actual physical horror books. Uh, big uh, horror guy. Amazing guy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like butchering. Oh, yeah. Duh, no, no, T-H-T-H-P. Th- 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 oh, wait, because he's... <laughs> yeah. I think... The... The... What? Books? Book. Book? Abyss, there you go. Oh, okay. The Book Abyss. The underscore book underscore abyss. Yeah, his first few posts is about the NECA uh, Raph versus Jason, which is amazing, that face-off. And yeah, look, like I said, he's a Yeah, big... he has some Preacher, some First Kingdom, Lots some TMT, Turtles. TMT. Ooh, this, I have this amazing yeah. too. So Will's a great guy. Amazing to talk to. Uh, again, he recommended us to watch... I love how, that I have this book too, yeah. though. The Armor of Darkness, issue one. We're going to watch uh, New Year's Evil. It's an old school film. Uh, I'm not sure the year it came out, but... We'll keep we'll keep it keep updated with that movie soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, also, if you are comic book collectors, if that is something you're into, on our profile we have a link tree that has uh, the links to anything that has to do with us, right? So uh, it has Max. Uh, personal IG, if you like the the memes and the dark humor and all that kind of stuff, definitely a good place to go for that. Um, and you also have a link to your mama stuff. Yeah, it's which where is, you do a lot of thrifting and selling stuff like that. It's where um, Iris, uh, which is uh, my partner, and myself, we sell stuff on Macari. Yeah. So check that out. Uh, she has a lot of great <clears throat> items for sale. Yeah. Uh, like I said, support small businesses. Yeah. And also Randall, on his uh, Mr. Randall Radio Instagram, he does have comic books up for sale. It is for a uh, great cause, you know, yeah, to support his family in Colombia. Uh, so any any claim would help out tremendously. Yeah, uh, he has great deals. Um, yeah, Randall, if you want to say more about that, I mean, it's just pretty much that. Like, I mean. Uh what began uh, it began as just doing the funding for the family and that's basically where it's still at right now it's still trying to gather uh the total amount of funds ne- funds needed for to kind of make up for uh some funeral costs and stuff like that that we had in a in a passing in Colombia um and the economy in Colombia isn't great right now so unfortunately the family over there isn't doing fantastic enough to you know be able to cover these costs easily so um trying to you know gather as much as we could to kind of make up for this cost um and then outside of that it's still going to continue even after that fact um every thursday is going to be uh randall's new 52 oh it's a week oh shit. so every thursday i'm going to be putting up 50 up to 52 books for sale it's going to be spread through the day and it'll be a weekly thing um i'm gonna work out also doing uh live sales as well but promoted so maybe you know more people join in and hang out where it's i'm gonna have an actual shelf here with books and stuff like that for people to claim and there's also going to be a day for collectibles which is not going to be as heavy-handed but there's going to be a day for collectibles and then i'm gonna also like open the door for people like mac who have things that they want to you know, move or whatever to come over and hang out and mm-hmm. uh, put some stuff up too, you know, and do collabs with people who uh, who sell things like that. And yeah, horror comics are a big bitch to fucking find. Yes, I know they, 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 because that is one of the other things that I'm trying to dig for. And um, I, it's one of the things I am not going to get rid of for my collection because I love my horror books and I wish I had a lot more. <laughs> But I'm definitely going to be keeping my horror books. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, if you guys have any interest with comic books, it, it ranges from anything from 
from indie to Marvel, DC, uh, to Image, to any of those kind of companies. Uh, it also ranges in all like years. It'll go as far as like Bronze and Silver Age. I do have some Golden Age. I have to dig out of storage. But um, but it'll go through all of that from Golden Age, Silver Age, to Bronze Age, to Modern. And uh, it's going to be a combination of everything. It's mm -hmm. all over the place. It's not going to be only one character. It's not going to be only Marvel. It's not going to be only DC. It's everywhere. So um, if you guys are interested in any of that, come and hang out uh, at my page. And, uh, and I also do freebies. There's freebies that get thrown in the mix of it. So for people who do claims or whatever, mm -hmm. who have something already claimed, there's books that pop up as a free claim. Like you can just claim it and it'll add it to your stack. Yeah, just remember to hit that bell notification for his page. Yeah. Because uh, there's some uh, people that snipe those freebies like quick. Yeah. And so yeah. You know, be on your A game. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, uh, that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, you know, we've we've probably talked a lot more than we expected to talk in this review, but that's Bug it. perfectly fine. Uh, we wanted to, you know, definitely get out the giveaway information and get that out to you guys so you guys can know what's going to be up. And we're definitely going to be giving an extra, you know, entry to Rocky, to, to Heartless, to... Uh, Alex joined. Yeah, it's Alex jumped on. Uh, who else jumped in? Merle jumped in. Oh, yeah, Merle. And Sunny D. Andres, yes. Andres. Yeah, so we had a few people jump in, you know. Uh, but yeah, you guys will get extra entries just for being on this live with us to see us present what it is and end up, you know, still unfinished, but soon will be finished. Uh, Rock of Lazarus from Soul Keeper. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys again. Uh, we hope you guys had fun. Uh, we hope this uh, little chat was was entertaining and also helpful in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope you continue joining us on more because there's going to be plenty of uh, exactly, these. Because there is a shit ton of movies that exist. And there's a shit ton of movies we have yet to find out about. Yeah. We don't know shit about. Yeah. And we're going to find out with you guys. So yeah. again, we love you guys. Uh, we mean it. Uh, we hope you have a beautiful Christmas. Stay safe, drink, and eat safely. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Oh, and if you have any ideas of movies that might be niche or weird or something interesting, you might want not 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 a <laughs> not Debbie Does Dallas or anything like that. Like weird, as in uh, you know, uh, movies that aren't heard of. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and, yes. It's Judas of recommendations. Yeah. Uh, we'll look into it, see if we find it on streaming or if we can buy it <laughs> off uh, eBay or maybe we'll yeah. find it thrifting. Uh, so, you know, maybe just shoot us a recommendation of your favorite movie. I mean, movie. we still have a stack of the thrifted movies to go through. We yeah. still have a lot of them to go through. Shoot us your favorite movies. Maybe we can watch the it. killer. Oh, that's a classic, yeah. I gotta find out. I don't have the physical copy for that. <laughs> Rocky said, "What's that? Be does Dallas?" <laughs> it's another classic. I'll put it like that. Yeah, you should watch <laughs> it on your own, bro. Yeah, it's definitely one that you have to watch on your own. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you again. It's been a great night. Uh, I gotta go do some things. <laughs> it's a classic '70s. Uh, yeah. The cheerleader and her friends need to make money real quick so they begin selling stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> they don't sell, you know, thrift items, you know. It's so, not thrifting. They sell more than that, you know. It's not thrifting at all. It involves. <laughs> it involves a lot. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys again. Uh, it's, 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 it's been real. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So we love you guys. I know we're gonna we can stay talking and talking, but you know. <laughs> pre OnlyFans. <laughs> there you go, Nick. Oh, and again, a thank you and a big oh, shout yes. out to, to Ronnie. Ronnie's uh, Ronnie V's boutique, which uh, is where I picked up these in incredible ornaments uh, that are based with the uh, the Universal monsters you have. Uh, 
Creature of the Black Lagoon, Dracula, Frankenstein, Bride of, and then Wolfman over yeah. here. Um, never go wrong with some good uh, Lon Chaney Jr. But, um, you know, check out her page. She has incredible work. If you like horror stuff, she does a lot of things. She does even um, the, the pops for the, for the phones and all that stuff. The holders, the pop oh, phone, the pop holders. Oh, shit, okay. Yeah, she yeah. does a lot of things like that. We'll tag everybody we mentioned uh, on the, the caption of our post. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so you, so you go ahead and check them out because they do great stuff. And again, it's like Max said, supporting local small business. Or not local, or, or but local, obviously support local. And then also support you try to get local some other small businesses that aren't local. But, um, yeah, so she is based in California, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, incredible great work that she does. And it's all handmade, hand-painted. So definitely have to appreciate that as somebody who does, like, mm -hmm. shit with my hands, too, now. A lot of things. Um, you know, I have to appreciate that. And even more when it's from artistic value. Oh, so, yeah. Can't forget the last giveaway, a Ziploc bag. Yeah, there you go. That was actually what hold the clay that made that guy. <laughs> but yeah, that'll do it for random film reviews. Yep. That's uh Can we see behind the tree. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Maybe. We love you. You have a good one. Yeah. Stay safe till next time. Thank you everyone who jumped on and hung out. Oh. And a ho. Ho ho. ho. For you and me. Ho to you. <laughs> <laughs>